I'm Orski, and today I'm going to do something incredibly stupid. I am going to attempt to defeat one of the hardest board games out there with a group of complete strangers. The game is called Nemesis. It's a semi-cooperative game where you and your crew must survive a ship full of hostile aliens. Not sure what semi-cooperative means? What it means is while technically we all want the same thing, we want to make it off the spaceship alive, there's a very real chance that someone in our crew will betray us. At the start of the game, each player is dealt two secret objectives. A personal objective, which are generally more cooperative but a little harder to accomplish, and a corporate objective, which are generally easier to complete but can totally screw over your fellow crewmates. Even if you manage to make it off of this ship alive and well, if you don't complete your secret objective, you lose the game. So these objectives are very important. Sure, your good friend Jim would probably choose the option to help out the group, but can you say the same thing about a complete stranger? And the more infighting that develops among the crew, the less likely you are to survive this alien infested ship. Will I make it off this ship alive and well, or will I be yet another casualty of one of the greatest and most difficult board games out there? If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. If there's enough interest, I'll make another Nemesis video when we reach 6,000 subscribers. So how does one play Nemesis? Despite it having a 28 page rulebook, it's actually not that complicated. Like I said, at the beginning of the game, each player is dealt a secret objective from the personal and corporate objective decks. Once the first intruder, AKA alien, arrives on the board, everyone will be forced to choose one of those objectives and discard the other. The overall goal of the game is to complete your secret objective and survive. And there are two main ways to make it off of this ship alive. Hijack an escape pod back to earth or go back to sleep in the ship's hibernatorium. If you take too many wounds from intruders, you die. If you go back to sleep in the ship's hibernatorium and the ship is heading to any planet other than Earth, you die. If you go to sleep and two out of the three engines aren't working, you die. If you make it back to Earth, but you're contaminated and fail the contamination check, you die. If someone activates the self-destruct and you can't deactivate it or escape on an escape pod in time, you die. There are so many ways to die in this game. There's no point in covering every last one. Just know that surviving and completing the objective is freaking hard. And you simply don't have time to double check everything your teammates tell you. For example, the engines in the cockpit are on opposite sides of the ship. You'd probably die trying to check both of them. So you have to rely on your teammates to check and they could be lying to you. So let's cover what each player can do on their turn. At the beginning of each round, each player draws up to five cards. Then play proceeds clockwise with each player having two actions per turn. And with those actions, you can move by discarding a card to move into a neighboring room. And when you move, you have to roll this noise die and place a noise marker in the hallway you rolled. If there's already a teammate in the room you're moving to, you don't have to roll the noise die. If you need to place a noise marker and there's already a noise marker in that hallway, uh-oh, you just summoned an intruder. Next up, you can move carefully by discarding two cards to choose exactly where you want to put that noise token. You can use the ability of one of your cards, paying the associated cost by discarding that many additional cards. You can shoot an alien. You can punch an alien, although I wouldn't recommend that. You can escape from a room with an alien, but it does attack you as you leave. And you can also use a room ability, trade items to teammates, craft items, pick up heavy items, activate a quest item. There's a bunch of stuff and don't worry if it comes up, I'll cover it in more detail when it happens. After each player has used up all five of their cards or pass for the round, we move on to the event phase. Step one, move the time tracker. Once it reaches this spot, the hibernatorium opens up and crewmates can start going to sleep. If it reaches the end, uh oh, the ship jumps into hyperspace and everyone that's left on the ship dies, unless they went to sleep, of course. Two, if the self-destruct sequence is activated, move it one space. Once it reaches this spot, it can no longer be deactivated, but all the escape pods open up. Once it reaches the end of the track, well, you can guess what happens there. Step three, if you're in the same room as an intruder, it attacks you. Step four, if the intruder is in the same room as a fire token, it takes one damage. Step five, draw and resolve an event card. These are usually really bad. Step six, complete intruder bag development. This is also pretty bad. Once the event phase is finished, all the players draw back up to five cards and we repeat the process all over again. And like I said, I'll cover additional intricacies as they come up. Okay, with that out of the way, let's meet our ragtag group of strangers. First up, we have Thanatos as the mechanic. Their technical skills allow them to specialize in repairing the ship, especially the engines, and they have an easier time crafting the powerful items of the game. They can also crawl through the technical corridors, effectively allowing them to teleport around the ship, which is frankly an awesome move. Next up, we have Chaos R Lad 44 as the psychologist. A master of talking about their feelings, the psychologist specializes in following around their fellow crewmates and giving them extra cards and actions, so kind of a buffing teammate. Next up, we have that person you hate as the convict. A dirty lowlife criminal, the convict specializes in screwing over their teammates, beating aliens to death with their trusty metal pipe, and they can take one extra heavy wound before they die. Unfortunately, the convict also starts out with a pair of handcuffs, reducing the number of heavy objects they can carry to one. But don't worry, they can unlock these handcuffs, but only if they convince the bounty hunter to give them the keys. Speaking of which, we have Jason the Menace playing the bounty hunter. And you know what? The bounty hunter is the best character in the game because he gets to play with a dog. I mean, look at this card. They're snuggling. He can send his dog, her name is Laika, by the way, to explore other rooms and even upgrade her to attack aliens and fetch items. Oh, and look at this card. It's so thematic, it breaks my heart. If an intruder would attack and kill you, Leica will sacrifice herself so you can live. I'm not crying, you're crying. 
So last up, we have yours truly. I decided to play the pilot in this game. A master of the ship, I have an easier time checking and changing the destination of our vessel. I have an easier time using the various rooms of the ship, and I have an easier time dipping out in an escape pod if things get hairy. So now that you have all the background information, let's hop into some juicy gameplay. And so I'm immediately greeted with my two objectives. The first one's called Aliens on a Spaceship. I have to send the signal and destroy the nest or send the signal and the ship must be destroyed. Sending the signal isn't too bad. I just have to find the comms room and spend two cards to send the signal. <laughs> Destroying the nest on the other hand is insanely hard. I either have to destroy every egg in there or I can set the room on fire and let the fire kill the eggs. The problem is it takes a lot of time and I don't necessarily know if I want to commit all that time to that when there is a lot of other stuff to do to survive. So I'm more leaning towards the second objective, which is called Mission Debriefing. And any either a character other than me that is blue, white, or orange must reach Earth and survive. So basically, I just have to keep the psychologist alive or the mechanic alive, which is doable. Or I have to send the signal and make sure that a green, purple, or red character must not survive. So I either have to kill off the convict or the bounty hunter, both of whom are very tanky and hard to kill in general. So I'll probably be leaning away from that one, especially because it also requires me to send the signal. So my general game plan going into this one is to make sure I can keep the psychologist and the mechanic alive, and I'll pivot from there if necessary. And remember, I don't actually have to choose one of these until the first First intruder arrives on the board. And to start out the game, our brave psychologist goes adventuring. And unfortunately, they find the showers, which isn't that great of a room, and it's on fire. They roll the noise die okay, and... So the a swee! So they get a noise token in hallway number three. They also decide to search for an item. And since they end their turn in a room on fire, they take one light damage. If you get three light damages, you get a heavy wound. If you get three heavy wounds, and then you take any more damage of any kind, you die. Yeah. Bounty Hunter, do you want me to initiate a trade to get my item? Sure. Thanks. Such a kind soul, Bounty Hunter. Need all the help we can get. In case you missed what happened there, the Bounty Hunter did agree to trade the convict their handcuff keys, so the convict used their turn taking off their handcuffs. So, now they have two heavy item slots. Uh, I guess I'll start heading towards the front, do some pilot stuff. Yeah. Okay, there. Ooh, no noise. And I'll search. I will do some careful movements. Put my noise token here. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> slime. Oh, slime. room color Double slime. slime. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to search, but. <laughs> you should search, dude. Maybe find some slime. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to head towards the showers. I did. <laughs> Wasted turn. And to explain what just happened, whenever you flip over a room, you also flip over one of these smaller markers that have how many items are in the room and if there are any special effects that trigger when you open the room. So for example, if you got this symbol, a door would close behind you. If you get this symbol, the room is on fire. If you get this one, the room's not functioning, so you can't use its abilities unless someone fixes it. And lastly, if you get this symbol, it means you're slimed. So whenever you get an X, which usually means you don't have to roll for noise, instead you treat it like a danger symbol, which means if there is an intruder in any room adjacent to yours, it immediately comes into your room. If there aren't any intruders next to your room, then you just had to put a noise token in every single hallway. So being slime makes your no noise rolls way freaking worse. So the bounty hunter ended up using their dog to check a room and they found the engine control room, which is absolutely sick. It lets you check the status of the engines with just two cards. Unfortunately, it's broken, so someone will have to fix it first, but that shouldn't be too hard. And lastly, the bounty hunter used a search card to look for items. I will move to this card. Okay, uh oh. Nice. There you go, and get your motion scanner for what it's worth. Yeah, I activate my emergency scanner and motion scanner. Oh, is that friend? Dun dun dun. Yeah, so unfortunately, since the convict rolled for noise in a hallway that already had a noise token in it, they have to face an encounter. So they pull out an adult, which is one of the harder ones to kill. And whenever you pull one out, you have to check the back. If you have a number of cards in your hand equal to or greater than the number on the back, they do not surprise attack you. Unfortunately, since the convict only has two cards and the adult symbol they drew has a three on the back, they do get surprise attacked because they don't have enough cards. And whenever you get attacked, you draw a handy card from this deck to see how much damage is going to get done to you. So they get one contamination card in their deck, which can impact whether or not they survive at the end and will clutter up their deck because you can't use those for actions. And they take one light wound. Okay. Not, not the worst. Yeah. Yeah. And you get a second light wound for the fire room if you end in there. Yeah, I don't think I want to end in here. Yeah. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> uh, I want to let's go here. I'm going to take an attack. Yep. Okay. Another scratch. Okay, I'll take that. Yikes. Two contams already. Yeah, round two. 
Wait, the Nats. Oh, am I turning here? God. Oh, never mind. All right. I really don't want to end my turn here. <laughs> wow, the back of the ship is just horrible. Yeah, it's a disaster. Yeah, I know. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm heading over to the front of the ship. And the worst thing is that oh, the shower man. room is on fire and has an intruder in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. Okay. I'll just keep on moving. Guess we'll go here. Of course, it's on fire. <laughs> See what I get. Come on. Four. Four. Okay, not ideal. Not the worst, I though. No. no. Well, you probably, if you're going to the cockpit, you probably want to careful move, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what I'll do. Careful move. Oops. Oh, we just going to the cockpit already? Man. Yeah, F it. I'm a good pilot. It's turn one. It's round one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. sprinting over here. If their stupid armory wasn't on fire, I'd hang out for a minute. Oh, I have to put my um, danger somewhere. Wonder where I'll put it. All right. Huh. Three. I'm going to pass. Fix the room. Pass. And with their last move around, the psychologist explored a neighboring room and found the armory. My God, this side of the ship is a nightmare. I know it's. Let me out. We just quarantined that. Yeah. Just yep. lock all the doors on the side. Like there's nothing good. Here. <laughs> just grab one of these. All right, here, and add over, and then put it back here. And flip it over. Well, I guess it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a two, I think. Okay, yeah, he has no cards, so you gotta take an attack here. Luckily for Orange, since they drew a transformation, and the symbol on the transformation card doesn't match the adult symbol of the intruder they're fighting, they don't take an attack. The attack misses. Okay, everything flips back. Move the time track. Intruder attacks. All in one round, they got a fire to uh, in... Fire first, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Intruder? Uh, no, actually, it's intruder, then fire, it looks like. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, we do it in turn order yeah. for the attacks? Have we? What's the sequencing on this? All right, there's only uh, one. Okay. Oh yeah, it's only one. Okay, orange pull. Uh, pull one attack. Just resolve it for him. It's a creeper yeah. attack, so it's a miss. So every intruder that's in a room with a fire token, they take one damage. And whenever an intruder takes damage, you draw one of the cards from the attack pile, look at the top left, and if the damage on the intruder is equal to or greater than the number on the card, they die. If there's an error like this, you draw an event card. Whatever number is listed in the top right is where they run away to. In this case, we drew a four. So they went back into the vents and we don't have to deal with them for a little while. Perfect. And of course we end up drawing egg protection so we have to resolve an encounter, aka an alien will come, to any player who's in the nest or carrying an egg. And guess who's in the nest? Our poor convict who's already been attacked twice. Yeah, Are you is. joking? <laughs> <laughs> poor convict, dude. An adult, oh my god. Oh, uh, number is four. Four. Uh, so again, attack, woo, let's see. I'm rooting for you. I, I am. Damn, you're getting though. scratched for days Third here. Scratch, yeah. yeah. Oh, I get a serious wound. A bad one? Uh, yeah, I gotta get my serious wounds, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's see what you get. You're fucking. No. Broke your hand, uh, bro. It hurts. I'll draw the bag for the bag development. It is a larva. So, yeah, every round we have to draw one of these tokens out of the bag. This is the effect that happens with each one. You don't have to know all of them. Luckily, we ended up getting the larva, which is a pretty nice one to get. It just means we have to take the larva token out and we add one adult token to the bag. Not a big deal. Yeah, this is only the second yeah. round. That's actually pretty This nuts. is a terrible start. <laughs> Yeah. So the convict was starting us out this round. So they played catch this to run away from the intruder without having to take an attack. So they dipped out to the engine and then they kept on moving through to explore another room and they found the self-destruct room. And I'm not super pleased with their reaction. Generator, I'm gonna just blow up this ship. We don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> like, if I blow this up, no one's gonna get to it, so. And you know what, being the nice guy that I am, I decided to check the coordinates of where the ship's actually going. And you know what? Turns out we were heading to Mars, so we would have all died if it wasn't for me. So I used my second action to change the destination of the ship back to Earth. And you know what thanks I get? Okay, we're going to Earth, boys. I don't know if it's just the pilot, though. So on the mechanics turn, they do a little bit of exploring, and they actually find the fire control room, which can be very helpful for putting out some of these pesky fires. And then they just search for an item. 
The bounty hunter decides to explore a room with their dog and they find the airlock control room, which is the biggest troll room ever. Basically, it lets you shut every door to another yellow room. And if you can't escape by the end of the round, whatever's in there gets sucked out and out of the space. Intruder or crewmate. So hopefully no one uses that against us. And then for their second action, they use the engine control room to check all of the engines. And we've got some good news. Good boys. Oh, let's go. And next on the psychologist's turn, they end up running away from their intruder, which attacks them, but luckily for them, the attack misses again. And then they use their duct tape to repair the fire control room. And then unfortunately, we see one of the downsides of playing with a group of strangers. <laughs> you played 10 games of Nemesis this week. <laughs> Oh my god, I hope he doesn't have his speakers on. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Oh, he left. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Should we just like kill off their character or I don't know? I mean, killing off is pretty I like to, weird. Uh, what I like to do is like make him an NPC. So whenever it's his turn, we just make him pass and just keep doing that until he dies. Oh, okay. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So unfortunately, the psychologist left the game and we're going to leave them to die. And remember what my objective was? Yeah, part of it was to keep the white character alive. So my objective just got a little bit harder now. I mean, we can still try to keep the mechanic alive, who is the orange character, but I might end up having to kill one of my fellow teammates here. This is not a good development. Well, to finish out the round, pretty much everyone else passed and the mechanic decided to use the fire control room to put out the fire in the shower. So not too much happened. And now the event phase begins. We move to round 13. We draw an event and we get hatching. So we discard one egg from the intruder board. Any characters who are in the nest room who have no action cards left are infested by a larva, which would not be good. Luckily, the convict left the nest room. And since no character was infested, we just put a larva into the intruder bag. Not a big deal. This is a really good event to draw right now. And then from the event bag, we draw a queen, which is also surprisingly a really good one because we have no one in the nest room. Room. Thank God the convict got out of the nest room. So we just add another egg to the nest. Not a big deal. It makes the nest a little bit harder to destroy, but luckily we're not going for that objective anyway. So yeah, pretty minimal effect there. We got lucky. Um, I guess I'll go over here. You're, are you heading here, uh, bounty hunter? Um, I don't know where I'm, what I'm going to do right now, to be honest. Okay, I, my objective is done, though. Oh, congrats. I guess I'll just uh, I'll move. I'll head over here. Keep exploring. Door. Where'd you come from? Oh, from yep. here, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. Two is fine. I'll search. On the mechanic's turn, they moved into the storage room and activated one of their quest items that can only be activated in the storage room. They activated their plasma torch. And the plasma torch allows them to spend one card to open or close one door in a corridor connected to the room that they are in. And destroyed doors can be closed using this item. So this pretty much gives the mechanic complete control over the doors of the place, which is a pretty powerful effect to have. It makes betraying others and avoid being betrayed by others much easier. Because in this game, you can't directly attack people. You just have to box them into areas with aliens and hope they die usually. On the bounty hunter's turn, they use their dog to explore an adjacent room, and they find the surgery room, which is great for trying to get rid of contamination cards and larvae on your character. This could actually be a pretty useful room for the convict who has been hit with so many contamination cards so far. And remember, those contamination cards, they clutter up your deck, they make it harder for you to do things because you can't use them for actions, and at the end of the game, they can actually kill you. Then the bounty hunter searches for items, and they happen to find exactly what they need to activate seek mode. And seek mode allows you to use the search action with your dog, which makes it a lot easier to go and get items. And our convict just keeps on moving through the ship. This this time exploring engine number one. Three. That's so bad. Oh, God damn it. It's a larva. Okay. You're fine. Yeah, you're chilling. So the convict enters an encounter with a larva, but the convict also doesn't have any weapons. So they can't punch the larva without taking another contamination card, which they really don't want at this point. So instead, they decide to just run away from the larva. And whenever you run away from an intruder, you take an attack. And the larva is interesting because instead of just attacking you with a card, it just jumps into your freaking chest. So now the convict has a little buddy, which is not going to make his life much easier. And on my last move of the round, I move back to the engine control room with the idea being it puts me closer to the airlock room. So I might be able to kill the convict or the bounty hunter with a sneaky little airlock play sucking them out into space and it also puts me closer to the signal because remember if i go with the one that has me kill one of my friends i also have to send the signal so two birds with one stone here i can't really count on white living anymore because they left and i don't want to put all of my eggs in the mechanic has to live basket i'll fix the room i'm in and pass i am going to move sneakily and i'm slimed yep Hooray. i'm just attaching everything to myself you know, 
Sneaky. It's like Pokemon. Gotta catch it all. So now we move on to round number 12. So the event we draw this round is called Short Circuit, and we have to place a malfunction marker on each yellow room with a computer, which is not ideal because it breaks all of those rooms. And if we have so many malfunction markers out on the map that if we go into the pile to get out another one and there aren't any in there, the ship is considered too broken to fly and it explodes and we all die. So yet another way for us to die. Same thing goes for the fire tokens, by the way. And unfortunately, our good luck ran out this round. We drew an adult token from the bag, so each of us has to roll for noise in turn order. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to be summoning a few aliens. Unfortunately, our AFK psychiatrist summoned an alien, and they get hit with a claw attack. The mechanic decides to run away from their alien, so they do take an attack as they leave. It is a claw attack, which isn't ideal, but it's not the worst thing you can get. But unfortunately, when they roll for noise, they roll a silence roll. Which, like I said earlier, is normally a really great roll to get. But they've been slimed, so they treat their silence rolls as danger rolls. And danger rolls makes every adjacent alien come into your room. So now the mechanic has to deal with two different intruders in their room at the same time. Uh, the objective to keep the mechanic alive is looking less and less likely. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. No. Uh, yikes. I don't think you're living through this one, my guy. This is suicide. <laughs> I mean, what else can you do? It's like, just shoot it's him. Like... I guess I'll shoot one. I'll try to. I'll try to kill one. I've got my shotgun. So the mechanic unfortunately rolls a blank and does not hit the alien. Mm. Oh. oh. Okay, next up is the bounty hunter. They'll use their dog to search for an item, and then they'll just move on to the hatch control room. But unfortunately, they roll a danger symbol. But since the intruder in the next room is already in a room with one of the crewmates, they're busy, they don't come into the room, which is nice. So instead, you have to resolve the other part of danger, which is you have to add a noise token in every adjacent hallway. On the convict's turn, they just start backtracking. So they go to the generator room, and then back to engine number two. I guess I should repair while I'm here. Stabilize our ship a bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just uh, double check the engines, make sure they're working. Looks good. All right. So this is huge for me. I've confirmed that the ship is going to Earth, and I now know for a fact that at least two out of the three engines are working. So if I go to sleep, I survive the game. Now I just have to actually get my objective done and go to sleep. So now the mechanic has to run away from the two intruders in their room, which means they have to take two attacks. Luckily for them, though, the first one misses, and the second one is just a slime. So they get a slime marker, which they already had, and they get one contamination card. Overall, one of the best case scenarios for the mechanic, honestly. Wow, that was actually... Not that bad. Lucky. Now I yeah. just we'll see. Has to roll as well. <laughs> Every single card now is a bite. That's, that's all I've left. Oh, so Four. close to getting fucked there. Nice. I'm a oh, no, mind. it's done. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Blank. I'm fine at least. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if you go anywhere else, you might die. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, I'll shoot him. I'll shoot him. And just to quickly explain how shooting an alien works, when you take the shoot action, you spend one ammo from your weapon. If you roll a blank, you miss. If you roll this symbol, you can only hit a larva or a creeper, which are the weakest aliens in the game. This symbol, you can hit a larva, creeper, or adult. This symbol lets you deal one damage to any kind of alien. And this one is a critical roll, so you deal two damage to the alien. That's a crit. Oh, let's go. Just two. Hey, he died. Yo. Oh, wow. Weakling. <laughs> Cannot surpass me. <laughs> All right. We're gonna... Open the hatch. I think I'm going to open one in B, actually. So the bounty hunter unlocked one of the escape pods, which opens up the opportunity for somebody to escape the ship. And that's the end of the round. 11. Our AFK psychiatrist gets attacked by the intruder that's in the room with them, and luckily for them, it misses. And then we pull one of the best events in the game. We pull Lurking, which allows us to remove all intruders that are not in a room with a character already. So this cleans up our gross ship very nicely. That was actually nice. It's really nice. Yep. Starts Who's going first? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hey, <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> for the lurking. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I rolled a silence. Your turn, convict. Second. Yeah. Danger. Okay, that's good. Come on, come on. Three is oh, like an intruder. Let's see what I get. See what you got. Oh my god. Queen. Come on. What is it? A four? Yikes. Four. Okay. Where is she? Oh, oh you're so annoying. Me. Hey, if you move here, get a lucky Oh, she roll. bites me. Oh my god. Yeah, that's all bites left. That's all that's left. If the character has two serious wounds, they die. If not, it's one serious wound. Okay, let's see what I get. Where the. Uh... Oh, right here. 
there's a potential to airlock the queen this round. Hand. The cost of all. Eh, that's fine. I'll take that. That's everyone. I'll start my turn. I'm going to try to get her over here. I can probably spawn an alien and fire. So I'm just going to roll there first. Oh, yeah. Clear the vents as well. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. A larva. 50, 50, nice. Perfect. Oh, she's going to die. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She dies. Cool. All right. About I carefully move right here. Oh, we're doing a lot. Let's go. Uh, I'll move here. Uh, Sneakily, this is here, and then my turn. I'll pass. I'm get. I'm gonna try and get away from this queen. So I draw the attack first before I reveal the room. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Sail attack. Wait, did you die? No. I just died. <laughs> did you? If wow. they have at least one tier screen, they die. What the hell? I'd yeah. rather have a bite. It's the bloody queen, you know. Oh wow. rip. You don't see that very often. No, you don't. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, all the hatch is open. <laughs> yeah. You died before yeah. the psychologist. <laughs> I lost to the <laughs> AFK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, GG's. Well, thanks for watching. If you liked it, subscribe. Haha, <laughs> psych! You really think I'm gonna go down that easily? There's a psychiatrist that's been sitting empty, everybody's been waiting for it to die, and now it's my chance to come back into the game and take it over. I'm getting off this damn ship. Okay, so we're starting over with a new character. Let's figure out where we're at on the game. I'm starting out in the bottom of the map and I have an intruder with me. I also have a serious wound, which is bleeding. So I'm gonna take a light wound every single time I pass. So I need to get that dressed as soon as possible. The queen that basically just one shot killed me is up here. So I'm gonna wanna avoid that area. Our bounty hunter's in the airlock control room. So maybe they'll take care of the queen for us by sucking them out into space. The convict is stuck in the nest room. They have a million contamination cards and are probably gonna die soon. And lastly, our mechanic is just hanging out in the showers. I think they're also pretty grievously injured. So while we're not in great shape, we have a real chance to make it off of the ship. My new objective is called housekeeping. I either have to make the ship survive with all three of the engines working. And unfortunately, one of the engines is broken right now. So I'm going to have to go back there and fix it if I want to complete this. Or I just have to survive and no more than seven malfunctions slash fires can be out on the board, which is probably impossible because there's already so many out there. And I think everyone's priority right now is just getting off of the ship. So I can't count on teamwork to take care of that. So I have to fix this engine. So with the Bounty Hunter's next move, they activate the airlock control. So all of the doors surrounding the queen close. And if none of those doors are open before the end of the round, the queen will get sucked out into space. Delicious. I mean, I guess I gotta run away here. So I'll just do it. Wish me luck. Let's see what I get. Fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, frenzy, nice. Oh, frenzy. What the heck? I Are got all just lights just waiting to be used? <laughs> I've got white's good luck. Come on, come on. Four. Okay. Not oh, ideal, fine. but whatever. Yeah. There's one item in here. I'll search. I'll take the room yeah. action. Search for an item. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, is it just me left? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I pass. Since I have the bleeding major wound, I should have taken a light damage after I pass, but I forgot. And I promise it doesn't actually end up affecting the game, so don't get too mad at me. Okay, we move on to round 10. The larva dies to the fire, and luckily nobody opened the door to the queen, so the queen gets sucked out into outer space, and we draw one of the worst events in the game. Damaging fire, place a malfunction marker in each room with a fire marker, and place a fire marker in each room neighboring a room with a fire marker. There was so much damage just done there, and remember, if we put too many fire and damage tokens out there, the ship can explode, so not good. And the other part of event cards is the fact that at the top, all larva and adults move through hallway number one, which means, oh, my old friend is back. Oh my god. Please. Yeah. And we drew an adult from the intruder bag, so now everybody has to roll for noise, unless they're already dealing with an intruder like me. So, rolling for noise, starting with me. I rolled on three. You're fine. Counter, I get a larva. I think I'm next then. Yeah. No. It is. Come on, danger silence. That's not danger silence. Nope. Oh boy. It's an adult. My favorite kind. Let's see what I get. It's gonna be a bite. I know it is. There's like none left. It's not. It's claw attack. Another claw attack. How much contam do you have now? Your deck is all contam. <laughs> yeah, it's like all contam. And you fun. got a larva. Uh, me? Uh, come on, give me silence. God damn it. Oh yeah, there's none there. Cool. Hooray. Hooray. Some luck, finally. Okay, well, I guess I'll just keep on running. Ugh, I'm going to summon a stupid intruder, too. Whatever, let's see. 
And I get bitten. If they, okay. yep, just a flesh wound. Arm. Drop a gun. Uh, oh, yeah. hmm. The shitty pistol, probably. Yeah. Goodbye, shitty pistol. Okay. Now I roll. Get another adult. You don't suppose you could track this one for me? Pass. Let's see what we get. Oh, blank? Hallelujah. Okay, I'll put an adult in there. Yeah. Cool. So unfortunately, the convict doesn't have a gun, so they elect to just start beating their alien to death with their bare hands. And hitting an alien with a melee attack is pretty much just strictly worse than doing it with a gun. Because if you miss with a melee attack, you end up taking serious wounds. Luckily for the convict, however, they have a pipe, so they only suffer a light wound when they miss during a melee attack action. So it's not quite as bad to punch as the convict. But you still end up taking those nasty contaminations. So first the convict plays Bash, so they can guarantee deal at least one damage even if they miss. Unfortunately, they do miss, however, so they still deal the damage, but they also take one light wound. Unfortunately, since that was their third light wound, they take a heavy wound instead. Oh, I can't run now. Oh, you can't. oh yeah. Six. And I'll punch it again, I guess. Oops, that's not, that's not the right one. Oh. Critical hit. That's still just one, though. Is it's it? Melee weapon, yeah. Oh. It runs away. Oh. Let's go. What's one. one? Where's one? Here. Cool. And I had that little dramatic reaction because that's the engine I need to fix for my objective. I cannot catch a break this game. My God. On the mechanics turn, they just come and join me in the emergency room and then look for an item. On the bounty hunter's turn, they shoot their larva and they kill it. Demolish this door. Okay. I'll use the room action to heal, to dress my wounds. So for their last move of the round, the convict uses the room action of the nest to take one egg. Usually the only reason you want an egg is so you can use it for the objective. I'm going to carefully move and get my other quest item. And that's the end of the round. Go to nine. Shuffle. And which one's the lowest? Oh, oh we lose an escape pod. Yeah. Ooh. And adults to three. So we've got this guy here. This guy here. Are you just me <laughs> yeah let's kill this mechanic i need to heal my wounds like don't get to heal. i might lamb up <laughs> ah yeah, mechanic no bag development is an adult uh so only me and convict roll yeah at least we don't have to roll right okay. we don't have to roll yeah one sure. i get an encounter it's you never know though attacks this will be interesting Just don't get a breeder <laughs> yeah there's a good chance no, oh, just scratches me. So we're one turn away from the hibernatorium opening back up. So the convict decides to just start heading back. They head to the showers and then they head right into the hibernatorium. And luckily for them, they summon no intruders along the way. Uh, no alien, actually. I'm saved. I don't suppose anyone would want to help me out and hibernate with me? Yeah. Try and kill the alien together. I'll head towards there. Uh, I'll die before the claw attack. Okay. Nice. Okay, I'll follow you out. And I get bitten. Hell right. yeah. Oh, you're uh, dead. oh, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, wow. Ah, uh, nice. Double death. You're not very good at this game, are you? I suck. <laughs> yep, that's right. I played this game of Nemesis with two lives and I died twice. I was not exaggerating when I said this is one of the hardest games out there. But this isn't the end of the story. We still have to see how our other crewmates do. And the craziness on this ship is about to ramp up to an 11. So the bounty hunter decides to run away from their intruder and head back to the airlock control room. Unfortunately, they do get scratched on the way out, but not the worst that could happen. They then use that room to activate the airlock control procedure and attempt to suck out the adult in this room here. I'm going to... Close this door. Why are you closing the door? Uh, fire doesn't, doesn't spread. Also, you know, other stuff. I'm on my way. What the hell, man? Oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. The betrayal. He's trying to kill purple. <laughs> An absolutely brutal betrayal by the mechanic there. Closing that door makes it so that the bounty hunter has no paths back to the hibernatorium. And it's kind of hard to open doors in this game. So the bounty hunter is in real trouble. On the bounty hunter's turn, they just send their dog on over to explore this room. And in doing so, they end up summoning an intruder to the escape pod bay. So now the path gets even harder. So this is another consequence of playing with strangers. I didn't notice this at the time, but halfway through the round, the convict just randomly drew back up to five cards. I even asked them about it and they were like, yep, yeah, I've been at five cards. You have all your cards. 
Yeah. So I don't know what's going on there. Probably just got a little confused. Anyway, they end up moving back into the slime room. Why they decided they do that, I have no idea. And they roll a danger symbol. So the adult that was about to get sucked out into space crashes into one of the doors trying to get to them and they break the door. So the airlock procedure is canceled and they still have an alien to deal with. And that's the end of the round. Hibernatorium is open for business. It takes fire damage. No movement except for the creeper. He goes into my room. The event of the round is called Nest. If the nest room is explored, place a noise marker in each corridor that is connected to the nest. Do not place a noise marker if there is one already present. So this one is actually pretty irrelevant. An awesome event to draw in the late game. Bag is an adult. Danger. Oh, so nothing. So he joins you. Oh, he does. Yep. Double danger. I will, will shut this door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Indeed. <laughs> I was helping you too. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna sleep together. <laughs> All right. Lake uh, is gonna go here. For one, nice. All right. All right. First action is to attack move. Boop, 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 boop. I'll move. <laughs> So I take adult attack first. I'll move in here, by the way. Scratch. And a miss. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to do bash. Yeah, so it goes up by one at least, and then it will. And you can draw to see if you killed it? I'll draw what? To see if you, because you dealt the damage to it, so you can draw a card to see if oh, you okay. Then I'll punch it again. Nope. I get a light wound and a compound. Oh, I might turn there. I'm going to try to sleep. I'll only succeed on a silence or a danger. Oh, uh, the mechanic's finally done it. They've gotten to the final stages of the game. If they can succeed now, they'll go back to sleep and escape into hyperspace. So what they have to do now, they have to perform a noise roll. If any intruder shows up in the room, the attempt to enter the hibernation chamber has failed. If no intruder appears, then congratulations, they're asleep. The issue is every single hallway connected to this room has a noise symbol in it. So if the mechanic actually wants to go to sleep, they only have two possible roles, a silence and a danger roll, neither of which would summon an intruder at this stage of the game. And the icing on top, the mechanic has closed almost every door surrounding the hibernatorium. So if they do summon an intruder, they're trapped in there with them. And believe me, the mechanic is not a good fighter. Will the mechanic reap what they sow or will they get off this freaking ship? Come on. Oh, oh, oh my wow. gosh. You actually made it out. They killed off everyone. Well done. <laughs> We might actually have a survivor. We might actually. Just gonna move again, I guess. Yep. Comes down to this. Adult attack. So what? Four light wounds and two times. Oh my god. Oh my lord. Oh no. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's insane. Try again. Moving back to the airlock. <laughs> Did, uh, no. Dead, but close. Um, I'll just punch it again. Hey, it is. Oh. Nope. Nope. Got a contam. Hey, punch it again. Most of the time, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Miss. Uh, Get a serious wound. <laughs> pass like so. All right, I'll punch the man again. You better kill him. Uh, nope. Get a contam. And a light wound. I'm probably dead here. Uh, I don't think yeah. I do. Oh, yeah. If you take another wound after you have three, you just. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, I so have. A, uh, yeah, you yeah. only die when receiving that's a wound. Four. But I died to bite anyway. Next. Convict or me? Who goes first? Me, I think, right? I get clawed. You guys like my 10 card deck? And Five of these are card deck is so thick. You get a <laughs> miss attack. So you're still alive, Convict. Convict. You're chilling. All right. Ben is life support failure. Dolts move to two. He's going to climb in there with me. Well, <laughs> uh, all green rooms. Uh, let's see if we actually survive this. It's one here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess the lab is in. Okay, and bag is a dull, but nothing happens. Damn yeah. it. 
there's really nothing I can start do. So unfortunately, the bounty hunter was pretty much completely blocked off from getting into the hibernatorium. They have three heavy wounds now, so if they take any more damage of any kind, they're just dead. So they decide to try and run away from the intruders one last time, and unfortunately, they do take a fatal blow, and they die. I died. Oh, you died? Oh, you died. Yeah. Uh, rip. Okay, we'll see if you can uh, make it happen, convict. All right, I'm going to punch the alien again. He's going out in a blaze, at least. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Don't forget your content. <laughs> okay, it's dead. Yeah, of course. I'm going to get the entire content back. It's all mine. I'm going to do demolition. Get into this door. All right, and then I'm going to walk in there. Let's see what I roll. Two. A two. Yep, I got a friend. Might get a blank. Yeah. Might get a blank. Yeah. Ooh. It's a larva, actually. That's pretty good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I can't get infected anymore. So. Well, you're in combat, though, so... You can't sleep yeah. either. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I oh. have to pass here because I only have two compounds in hand. So it's easy. It's only fizzing fire, I guess. The only thing that happens, like, like when you when you get attacked by larva, it just jumps inside of you. But since you already have one, I think it just means that you get a content. Okay. okay. I have no idea what happens with the larva in this type of case, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to assume rare content, situation. Right? It makes that most sense, yeah. I think. No, we yeah, do we not. Gotta, if it's the one that, that killed me, I'm going to cry. I'm going to start sobbing. Consuming fire. fire. Set the item counter to zero in each room of the fire. Oh, this might be the end. Yeah. No, because there's a door here. So oh, yeah. There's fire. a lot of closed door, actually. So one goes there. Yeah, there's no fire next to the habitarium. One there. One there. Yeah, it's fire. Two fire All tokens right. left. So the bruised and battered convict makes it through the event phase, and now they just have to draw a token from the intruder development bag. And unfortunately, they do get the adult, so they're gonna have to roll for noise. Okay, and they roll a four. Fortunately, there was no noise outside of the hibernatorium when they rolled, so they're in the clear for now. Yep, I sleep. Okay, roll. Okay, this is the final roll of the game. If the convict can avoid rolling a four, they fall asleep and they move into hyperspace. One of the most important rolls of the game. Oh, and they roll a three. They make it off the ship despite the mechanic's efforts. You'll try to sleep. Oh, yeah, you're actually, you're, you yeah, win. I win. Well, you, all right. All right, I go to sleep. Okay. Did you, what's your objective? But, uh, skip wow, the infected. Infected. wow, no, god damn it. Oh, yeah. so you're yeah. good, right? Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, great. Hell yeah. Yeah. I hate that. Okay, let's see what you got, perp. I have to be the only survivor. So the convict was able to complete their objective. They survived while being infected and carrying an intruder egg. And this was actually the perfect objective because with this victory condition, they're able to skip the contamination check. Remember those like 12 contamination cards they had in their deck? Doesn't matter at all. They just win the game straight away. And the mechanics objective? Well, they were player five, so they couldn't kill player five. So they had to be the only survivor on the ship. The convict surviving and winning the game resulted in mechanic losing. What a finish. Yeah. You were so close too. Yeah, you if were. I, I was so close. Close. You would have won if it wasn't for this objective. Yeah, guys, take it easy. It takes yeah. the game. GG. Yeah, yeah. That was a fun one. That was a good game. Yeah, GG. If you like this video, you might also like this video, where I hired a board game coach to help me beat my friend at Ark Nova. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.